please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Well, the Indian government has made it clear to the UAE that it will not accept foreign funding for rehabilitation of Kerala and denied the offer politely. The External Affairs Ministry in a statement has said that all funds for rehabilitation will be taken care through domestic efforts. Now, the government also clarified that donations to the Prime Minister and Chief Ministers are open for organizations as well. Remember, the centre made it stand clear after Kerala Chief Minister Pinarayi Vijayan thanked the UAE government for its 700 crore rupees relief offer. Now, according to protocol, India can only accept aid through agencies like Red Cross and not directly from any foreign government. Remember, Kerala has sought a 2600 crore special package from the centre, which so far has released only 600 crore rupees. All right, on uh, that note, uh, uh, Shireen Bhanshi caught up with Rajiv Sadanandan, the Health Secretary of Kerala, to get a status check on what things are like on the ground. Listen in. Well, the, uh, the good news is that uh, 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 there are no more rescue efforts to be done. Uh, all the people who have been marooned, isolated in different places, have been rescued and uh, brought to the camps. Uh, all the waters have received from that place, and so the the, the uh, everyone is uh, and no, no no there's no threat to life left. But um, we still have uh, uh, okay. 3,259 so camps and about uh, one lakh ninety six thousand and odd mm -hmm. families uh, still living there. Uh, many of them find it difficult to go back because um, the uh, houses are uninhabitable. And there is the threat of uh, infectious diseases breaking out. Mm -hmm. uh, just on that issue of uh, the threat of infectious diseases, uh, I'm looking at a statement that's been put out uh, by Dr. Shashi Tharoor. Uh, he has, of course, met with uh, WHO officials and UN officials. Uh, in this statement, he says that the WHO is in position to offer Kerala rapid diagnostic kits to test water, water filters, and monitoring NCD patients on medication. Uh, uh, you know. Is there a requirement for the WHO to step in and provide this sort of assistance? Is this what the state government is looking at? Uh, we, 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 we already have uh, uh, people from the WHO working with us. They're working with us surveillance medical officers. I mean, they're, they're national officers who are working with us. Uh, I had a conversation with the Deputy Director General, Dr. Saumya Swaminathan, and the India WR representative. As of now, um, we do not need uh, uh, anything more, anything more sophisticated. Because right now, it, uh, right now, what we're doing is looking for infectious diseases, and uh, our diagnostic systems are quite capable mm -hmm. of taking care of, uh, of 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 the possible threats that could come up. Uh, in case there are uh, okay. cases of infectious and so on, which needs uh, looking at different panels. The National Institute of Virology and the Manipur uh, uh, Virology Research Institute, uh, who worked with us on the uh, on managing the Nipah crisis, are available to us. But what about uh, antibiotics? Uh, what about medicines, vaccines, etc.? Uh, you know, for the possibility of leptospirosis or any of those other uh, critical uh, issues that may crop up. Uh, our antibiotic stock is, uh, I mean, uh, sufficient. In fact, we are right now about 40% more than what we need. We intend to ramp it up to 100% I mean, redundancy. Uh, the um, leptospirosis in itself is, uh, uh, is, is, is not something that needs advanced antibiotics. Either simple antibiotics like crystalline and penicillin and doxycycline is capable of taking care of it. In any of these diseases, the issue is not management. The issue is what are your systems that can pick mm -hmm. this up immediately and how good is the response to contain the epidemic and that yes. is what we are focusing on okay let's get on to a cnbc tv 18 exclusive then the government will only take into account 12 months of GST revenue and not 13 months, as some new reports are suggesting. This was told to CNBC TV 18 by a top finance ministry executive in a written reply to a question. Lata has more details. Lata, good morning. What does this mean and what could be the implications? Well, there's actually a, a, quite a silly thing that was going around, but more and more reports uh, and reporters were uh, attributing it to some finance ministry officials. Uh, earlier when I spoke to Sanjeev Sanyal, he didn't quite scotch the rumor. 
So, you know, it started getting a body of its own. Basically, the rumor is that this last year, the government took only 11 months of GST. Because GST in a particular month, much of it gets paid in the next month. And since our budget is on a cash accrual basis, last year they took only 11 months. This time, the March earnings would be got in April. So that will become a part. And this March 2019 will go into next year. That was what people thought. But this finance ministry uh, sourced report, supposedly, said that because they're advancing the date of uh, GST payment, and a lot of the GST payment gets done as people consume, uh, they're going to take... Uh, last year, they got only 11. This year, they will make it up by getting 13. Now, that changes the arithmetic completely because the asking rate, if you look at the 13 lakh crore odd that was anticipated in the budget, budgeted figure, then every month the GST collections should be 1.1 lakh crore, but the average is running much lower, around 94,000 crore. But suddenly if you get a 13th month, then you're square. So that changes the budget calculation considerably, which is why bond market people were very much interested in knowing where this is headed. But there was unambiguous clarity in a written reply uh, from the top executive in finance ministry that this is totally incorrect and like normal years, we will go with 12 months. Removes a lot of confusion. All right. Removes a lot of confusion. So thanks a lot for that, Lada. Well, Credit Access Grameen list on the exchanges today. And Manglam is here to tell us all the details. Manglam, well, the subscription was decent at two times led by QIBs. Uh, what is the expectation? Will it uh, return good money to the shareholders on first day itself? Well, that is anyone's guess, Anisha. I'll tell you what. Because, you know, 2.2 times is a subscription which was led by qualified institutional buyers, which was about five times, as you pointed out. And uh, the retail did not subscribe to it as much. So we will watch out for what happens because the issue price at 422 means the expectation expected market cap is 6,000. That means implied price to book value is 2.6 times FI19 earnings. Now, if you take a look at how the others are trading, the leader out there, Bharat, Finance, Bharat Financial Inclusion, is trading at around 4.5 times. Saturn Credit is trading at 1.6. So this one's right in the middle of that. So whether it makes money or not is anyone's guess. Uh, this, they have their strengths and weaknesses. Let's talk about their strengths. They have a strong customer connect, around 22 lakh customers is what they have. Their tightly run operations make it the most most profitable microfinance institution and they have high customer retention which is about 86 percent with strong rural focus now the problem the biggest problem is the fact that 85 percent of their book is in Karnataka and Maharashtra so strong concentration mm. and other than that they have just you know uh, joint uh, lending group loans that's just plain vanilla no value-added loans is what they give so uh, over the long term will their competitive positioning stay or not is the big question their opportunity of course is that they get more money they that, that fuels their capital requirement for going forward. And uh, microfinance itself is an underpenetrated sector. There is ample opportunity to grow. Biggest threat, multiple loans to same customer poses problem during crisis. I told about the retention, which is 86%, which means the same customer is re-given loans. 86% of the customers are re-given loans. So if one person does falter, that could be a problem for the company during crisis. And expansion into other geographies, does that happen at the cost of your margins or not is the big threat. So these are the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats for credit access available at 2.6 times FI19 book. Let's see where it goes. Okay, thank you, Manglam, for that. Let's see how that one lists. Uh, pretty much a nice summary of the strengths, weaknesses, as well as the opportunities lined up for that one. On to a CNBC TV 18 exclusive now. Gautam Singhania, the managing chairman and managing director of Raymond, says India consumption story hasn't gone anywhere and GST is a positive in the long run. In a freewheeling conversation with our colleague Nigel D'Souza, he adds, over the past few years, the company has cleared out many issues with respect to the Thane land value creation for the company is paramount. Listen in. I think in the textile apparel space, we're really the number one guys. In the fabric space, clearly number one with no real number two. Mm -hmm. Moving forward, I think is really, you know, uh, expanding this further uh, into rural areas mm -hmm. and also going up the value chain, like what you're seeing here in this lounge that you're sitting where. But I think India consumption, one, of course, if you go down the book, Pyramid. Mm -hmm. But I think there's a big opportunity for us even within our operating market space. Yeah. If you just take the top 50 million consumers in India, how do we sell them more? Uh, that's real big consumption. That those numbers are very large. Mm -hmm. So I don't think the Indian consumption story has gone anywhere. You had the demon, you had the GST. I think GST is good long term. Yeah. And some of these uh, bitter pills you've got to take and move on. So you know, 
I think raw material costs are cyclical mm -hmm. and they affect commodity manufacturers more. Yeah. While they do affect us, but when you're a branded product, it's easier for you to absorb. Yeah. So I'm not saying that higher costs are justified or, or good, but yeah. it's easier for us to absorb. Also, when you get higher costs, uh, you then look at your own cost structure, mm -hmm. and it forces you to, to bring in more efficiencies. Fundamentally, we don't really look at the stock price. We do the right thing. Absolutely. The stock price will follow. We're not here to, to make the stock price go up and do things accordingly. Right. That's not how we work. We want to do the right thing and focus on our business. As a company, we will mm. continue to do what's right for the company. True. Whether it's Thana land, whether it's selling of non-performing assets, etc., we will continue to do what's required for the company. We've really spent the last two, three years cleaning up all these parcels of land. Yeah. Now, you don't see that. Mm. You probably wonder what's going on. Mm. But let me assure you that value creation is paramount on my mind. Let's talk about the other non-core assets, the auto space, the hardware business. Now, those businesses, they have yeah, been doing, doing very well. They're doing well. Extremely well. But at some point of time, would you be looking at a buyer for show me, show me the money. I'm a seller. I've, I have demonstrated in my career that I'm not averse to buying and selling businesses. If I, somebody had shown me the money, it would have been gone by now. Positive cash flows and FY20 is on the cards with margin uptake as well. Yes. That's something that you've set out. We have seen it on your presentations yes. as well. But that's on the cards. Yes. Absolutely. And Mr. Singhana, you've mentioned this in the past, that you believe that Raymond is going to be you know, a blue chip company. So what's the growth plan? How do you make this a blue chip company? See, it again comes back to my same answer. You've mm. got to do the right thing for the company. So each business has a plan. Yeah. Now, let me give you an example in the textile business. Whilst we have the legacy business, which is the fabric business, yeah. which grows at a particular growth rate, that doesn't satisfy us. Right. We have the new verticals, ethnic wear today. Right. Very big, we have a big potential now. I mean, if you take the ethnic wear market, it's a 5,000 crore market. Mm -hmm. Now, what can I get 20% of it? Is that a possibility? Why not? If I put it in cricketing parlance, you've got the best players in the dressing room. Now they need to come out there and all play the innings of their lives. So no one's ever you know, questioned the players in the dressing room. But how do they come out there and play that one innings that takes Raymond to the next level? The game has started. You're going to have to wait and watch. Okay, so value accretion is paramount. That's the word coming in from Mr. Singhani of Raymond. But from the textile segment, let's move on to the FMCG space because a whole host of FMCG stocks will be in focus today. Mangalam, looks like you have a busy day ahead, a lot of moving stocks. A lot of moving stocks, hopefully, uh, because tell you what, you know, Anisha, over the last, uh, uh, the holiday, the FMCG analysts didn't have a holiday because okay. on uh, <laughs> uh, on Tuesday as well as Wednesday, there were a couple of analyst meets. We had uh, Nestle meeting all the analysts out there. They were positive. They said that, you know, uh, 25 of their 30 29 recent launches have been well received by the market. That's a good hit rate because India as a country has a hit rate of just about half a percent uh, success in new launches. So this is good. The comp for, for me uh, personally, this is the most important uh, line that has come out of that analyst meet that the company has divided its business into 15 clusters, which gives it local uh, uh, autonomy. Remember earlier, this was done by Hindustan Unilever in their WIMI strategy, which is winning in many Indias. That's good news when uh, an international company breaks down the market because India is such, uh, uh, such a diverse market. So this is a positive. Edelweiss maintains hold given the stock is closer to record highs. However, Credit Suisse continues to believe this as a turnaround story because they believe that we've just seen two years of positive growth after seven years of zero volume growth. So going forward, they have a lot of growth. So they have lifted their target price. On the other hand, we have Dabur, which raised uh, uh, the double-digit volume growth guidance for the remainder of this year after 21% volume growth in the first quarter. So that's a positive. CLSA has raised their EPS estimates lifted the target, target price from 500 to 575 as well. And finally, time for some chips. Pratap Snacks, they've acquired 80% in Gujarat-based Avad Snacks for about 150-odd crores, which is an acquisition at 1.1 times sales. Now, this is interesting primarily because the growth rate that Avad Snacks has shown from 27 crores in FY16, the revenues jumped to 139 crores in FY18 itself. What kind of growth can they do going forward? Are these numbers believable or not is something that the street will be watching out for. But positive opportunity for Pratap Snacks. Let's see how that stock uh, reacts as well. Okay, so Pratap Snacks nibbling on our uh, snacks perhaps, yes. but on that note, let's slip into a quick break. We'll get you a check on the Q's to watch from the futures and options space once we are back.
Well, let's get straight chatting about stocks that will be in focus today. Mahanagar Gas will be in focus after sources tell us that BJ Asia Pacific has launched book to sell 14% stake in the company. Sonal is here with more details. Sonal, good morning. The price set is close to 5% discounts. Expect some pressure on the stock today. Uh, that's right, Anisha. You know, this is the second time in last three months that BG Asia will be selling some stake in uh, Mahanagar Gas. So to mark the news, as you rightly said, BG Asia has launched a book uh, to sell around 14% stake in Mahanagar Gas and the price is set around 851 rupees. That's the floor price. And that's at a discount of around 4.5% to Tuesday's closing market price. So the total consideration will be around 1,100. 70 crore rupees and this is the second time remember last time in April the company had sold close to 8% stake in the company at around 901 rupees per share so in the start they held around 32.5% share have sold around 8% will be planning to uh, sell around 14% stake uh, more so 10% stake that is the residual stake will be uh, in the lock-in period up till June 29th of 2019 so some uh, supply overhang will be uh, held till then city is the book runner to the deal and let's see how the stock reacts to this today back to you. All right. Thanks a lot for that, Sonal. With, uh, with that, we'll move on to the commodity space. Manisha Gupta now joins us with all the update from the commodities arena. Manisha, crude from 72 has jumped to 74 just as we came back from break. Oh, yeah, absolutely, yes. And there has been some development in the global markets as well. One is that you have seen a decline in the U.S. weekly inventories by 5.8 million barrels. Markets were anticipating a much lesser uh, decline. So that clearly has helped the prices. Also, the trade dispute between U.S. and China seems far from over. There have been statements from the U.S. president that have impacted the currency and the commodity markets. But uh, another thing to watch also is that the latest round of the U.S. tariff is, uh, is due from today, and that will impact the prices going forward into the market. The U.S. production in the meanwhile continues at around 11 million barrels, and you have seen buying come in at the lower levels because of the uncertainty that we also are looking at in sense of Iran sanctions. So it really is about global queues and much less about supply demand, which seems to be impacting the crude oil prices. Another important uh, event really is in the metal space, where we have seen pressure come back yet and again. China has said that it will not resort to strong stimulus, while earlier they had uh, said uh, entirely different of what they are saying now. Apart from that, it also is about the weakness in U.S. dollar. That seems to be supportive. But markets also seem to be readying for a 96% probability of a rate hike by Fed in the month of September. And that will continue to move these markets. All right, Manisha, thanks a lot for that. With that, we'll move on to the queues coming in from the futures and options space. Despite the Nifty recovering from the low point of the day on Tuesday's trading session uh, and posting a record close, we saw FII sell in index futures for the seventh consecutive session. So the long exposure now stands at 51%. will be very interesting to see where this goes. Is there more short covering? Is there more downside for our markets? Primarily, because remember, next week is the expiry week. There was purchase of around 364 crores in index options as well. And that was primarily on account of unwinding by both short calls and short puts. Uh, today, the important cue will be the fact that we saw some writing at the 11,500 put and the 11,600 put. And that is where the SGX Nifty indicates an opening. So can the 11,600 mark be captured given that it is the maximum open interest in terms of calls? For Nifty Bank, weekly options expiry, we're absolutely in the middle of the range, which is 28,000 put and 28,500 call where there is the maximum open interest. So let's see whether those markers are touched or not as well. In terms of stocks, it's going to be very stock specific. Adani Power out of FNO ban. Adani Enterprises, remember, came out of FNO ban in the previous <coughs> trading session. Short covering seen on Kajari. Ceramics and Cummins, both those stocks were buzzing on the previous trading session, in the previous trading session, and NIIT Technologies saw some long positions being added. Jet Airways continues to see some short positions being added. Previous trading session, it was out of the FNO ban. The minute it did come out, we saw further short positions being added. Okay, thank you, Manglam, for that. Yes, as you mentioned, the HGX Nifty is suggesting a start over the 11,620 mark. But as of now, some of these uh, Asian markets have lost steam. Hang Seng is down around 160 points, and Nikkei also trading near to the low point. But with that, it's a wrap on this edition of Power Breakfast from the team and myself. Thank you so much for watching. Bazaar Morning Call comes up next.
ready to step up with your business. Get invaluable insights and actionable advice from India's top entrepreneurial champions who have decades of experience in shaping, building and supporting businesses. Presenting Young Turks Masterclass. Brought to you by the creators of India's longest running startup show. Throughout this month on CNBC TV 18 and CNBC TV 18.com.